Kingdom Hearts the Novel, written by Tomoko Kanemaki, original concept by Tetsuya Nomura, illustrations by Shiro Amano, translation by Melissa Tanaka, published by Yen Press, English translation copyright 2015 by Disney Enterprises Incorporated. Chapter 1. First Impressions, Destiny Islands and Disney Castle. As his eyes slowly opened, the sunlight streamed in a dazzling bright. The sound of the waves was the same as always, rushing softly against his mind. Sora got up and stretched. Before him, the blue sky and sea stretched on and on. As far as he knew, that was the entire world. These were the Destiny Islands, a little cluster of islets floating in the sea. Huh? What was it? He felt like he had had a bad dream. Was it scary? No, something about it felt nice too. That voice, that light, and that dark black shadow. And was it just a dream? Sora! Whoa! Kairi had suddenly appeared in front of his face. Sora jumped on to his feet. Give me a break, Kairi. Sora, you lazy bum. I knew I'd find you snoozing around here. Kairi leaned in peering into Sora's face, and smiled. Her red hair glinted in the bright light of that poured down from the sky, and reflected on the sea and sand. No! This huge black thing swallowed me up! I couldn't breathe, I couldn't... Ow! Whatever he was going on going to say got lost when Kaira knocked him on the head. Are you still dreaming? As she stared at him again, Sora began to feel uncertain about what he remembered. How could there be a pitch dark monster thing like that around here, under such a bright sky? It wasn't a dream. Or was it? I don't know. Sora hung his head. Kyrie gave him an expirated look and walked down to the water's edge. Turned away from him, she felt just a little bit distant somehow. He didn't know what to say to her. but. As he hesitated, Kyrie looked back with a smile. We better start working on it. Riku's getting annoyed. Huh? Startled, he turned around, and Riku was standing there, holding a log and scowling. So I guess I'm the only one working on the raft. It was a fairly heavy log. Riku tossed it to Sora with a shake of his silver hair. Ugh! Sora fumbled and got to catch the log. Riku turned to Kyrie. And you're just as lazy as he is. So you noticed. Kyrie grinned and began the ramping of the word the inlet. Okay, we finish it together. I raise you. Laughing, she took off at a, at a run. Huh? Seriously? Sora hurried after her and then Riku. Ready, go. Kyrie was already running, but at her words to the other two broke into full speed. The sun was still high. They had plenty of work ahead of them. Riku, you get some log, get the logs and some cloth and rope. Sora, you find some drinking water and mushrooms for us to take. I'll wait here. Got it. Sora and Riku took off running like for another race, footsteps crunching over the dry sand. A little ways off, and they could hear Titus and Waka playing with wooden swords. Wanna join them, Sora? But won't Kyrie be mad? Sora threw out a doubt as an excuse. The truth was, he just couldn't win against Riku, which made it hard to be interested. Don't worry about it. Riku thumped him on the back, and ran towards Citizen Waka. Ah, oh, jeez. On this little island, pretty much any game the boys played was something competitive, and the perennial favorite was sword fighting. Waka, a few of years older than everyone else, acted as a teacher. Just recently, Sora and Riku had become good enough to beat him once in a while. They were about to walk even with Titus. Here I come! Titus closed on Waka. Go, boys, go! Selfie was hopping up and down, making the outward curl at the end of her hair and bones at the time. Not done yet! Waka's voice rang out over the sound of wood striking wood, and the sword flew from his hand. Ah, oh, nuts! Tidus dejectedly plopped down on the sand. Riku picked up the sword that had fallen from some distance away and turned to Waka. My turn! Hey, hey, give me a little breather here, said Waka, scratching his head through his bandana, and tossed his stick over to Sora. 
You take him this time, Sora. But Kyle will be upset. You're wide open! As Sora stood there trying to get out of it, Riku leaped into the attack. Hey, no fair, Riku! Fights aren't, don't we have to be fair. Sora dodged his strike and with a jump and finally grabbed a sword. There wasn't any getting out of it then. All right, come at me. Riku smirked like he knew how he hardly he had a to try. Sora couldn't stand it. Here I come! The sword, the wooden swords met with a clank. Sora threw himself into the fight just like Waka had taught him, swinging sword straight down at Riku from one hand over his head. Clank, clank, clank over and over. Sora's style mainly involved staying in the offense. Mm. That's it, Sora. Keep going. Push him right into the water. Just as Waka cheered him on, Sora made a huge swing. Ouch! The sword leaped from Riku's hand and spun up into the air, then landed down into the sand. Whoa! Tidus yelled. <laughs> Breathing hard, Sora held down out the hand to Riku, who had fallen into his rear. <sighs> Let my guard down. Or I'm just better than you, Sora grinned and pulled Riku on his feet, then took off the towards the hill. Raise you to get to the stuff of the supplies. All right, Riku replied, dusting off the sand and run into the other direction. Hey, hey, a race to get what? But Waka's question went unheard as Sora and Riku ran off. Those two lately, and Kyrie too. I get the feeling they're up to something. Selfie screwed up her face and tilted her head in concentration. Waka shrugged. Well, they got Riku, so I wouldn't worry, yeah? That's not the point, Selfie said in a huff, kicking the sand. It's not fair, I want to be in it too, Tidus tried to follow them, but Sora had already disappeared into the bushes in the hillside and Riku into the sea. Mushrooms. Where were my mushrooms? Sora wandered around the hill in search of mushrooms. The ones that grew on this island were edible, and a while ago they'd even roasted some at the campfire. If they were planning to sail across the ocean for however many days, though, he needed to find more than that. From up the hill he could see Riku gathering things. He was carrying something that looked like a big piece of cloth. Must be nice being Riku. The all stung in his chest. It felt like nothing more than an accident that he'd managed to win the sword fight. Sora always was one, the one who lost. School grades, sprinting, it didn't matter what. He couldn't beat Riku. If he could just win at something. Sora slid down the hill and jumped into the thick foliage that grew beside the waterfall. There was at the entrance to a little cave. It was their secret spot. Sora and Riku had found it and told Kyrie. Haven't been here in a while. Inside the cave, the constant sound of the waves was hushed in a whisper. Further in, the space was more open, like a big great room. And at the end, other end of it, that door. It was a big door but without a doorknob or anything. It just sat there, as if in wait for a visitor from somewhere. On the cave wall beside the door, there was a little doodle. There it is. Years ago, Kyrie and Sora had drawn each other's faces on the wall, and they were still there. Sora crouched down and softly touched the scribbles. If he could be better than Riku... Sora turned around with a small sound. Who's there? There was a man in a brown robe. I come to see the door, he declared in a deep voice. Sora couldn't see the face beneath the hood. This world has been connected. What are you talking about? The man showed no reaction to Sora and kept talking. A world died to the darkness, soon to be completely eclipsed. At that, a chill crept up Sora's spine. Well, whoever you are, you're freaking me out. Where did you come from anyway? He didn't answer to the question, but said slowly, There is still much to learn. You know so little. You are from another world, aren't you? You do not yet know what lies beyond the door. One who knows nothing can understand nothing. Sora had been staring at the mysterious man, but now he looked at the door. That door, he thought. That big door. Didn't I see a door like that somewhere else just a little while ago? Hey, who are you? Sora looked back again, but the man was gone. While he was still in the cave, the bright sunlight had made him blink. The island spread out before him and its brilliant sea and sky 
what had just happened in the cave seemed like a dream. Armful of mushrooms he gathered to the, in the cave, he began to run down to the inlet where Kyrie and Rigu would be waiting. That man and the door. It felt like a dream, and no one would believe him if he said anything about it. Here on this little archipelago called the Destiny Islands, there was a the single person they didn't know. Not even anyone who, from across the ocean. No, wait, there was one person. Kyrie. She came across the, across the ocean, people said. Kyrie came from another world across the ocean, somewhere we've never been and heard of. That's where we're going to find. Sora, you're late. Sorry, had hard finding enough mushrooms. Winded from running, Sora held the stockpile of fungi to, for Kyrie to see. As soon as he saw her face, the incident with the strange man was gone from his mind. Kyrie and Riku were standing beside a soaring tall tree trunk. Whoa, you got, you got a lot, huh? Not bad for you. They both laughed, relieving him of the armful of mushrooms. Right, Sora. This looks like a good sale, don't you think? said Riku. Sora looked up at the cloth tied to the tree trunk like a flag. Where did you find a big piece of that big? Oh, nowhere. Riku shrugged and shrugged and smiled and then began to climb up the trunk. If there's a storm, we need to climb up the mast and lower the sail. I know that. Kairi watched them air back and forth, giggling. Three of them were building a raft, nice big one. A raft that would take them to worlds they'd never seen before. They lashed several logs together with some rope and stood up the trunk for a mast. Then the sail went up, made from the cloth that Riku had found, flapping in the sea breeze. She looks seaworthy enough, Kairi exclaimed. Riku leaped down from the mast. Yeah. On this, we can go anywhere we want, he said, gazing at the distance beyond the perfectly smooth horizon. The sun was sinking low, the sky shifting from the clear blue to deep crease. Hey Sora, he said, looking at the mast again. We haven't given our ship a name yet. Yeah, you're right, we should, Kairis looked up at the mast too. A sail like that sure gets the wind. The sail hung quietly over them. The sail that would fill up with the wind and take them gliding over the sea. What should we call her? At Corey's prompting, Sora mentioned the name he'd been thinking of all day. How about the high wind? The high wind, Rikusoft repeated. When the winds are high, she'll take us as far as we can go. Pretty good, right? Sora said. Riku gave him a nod. The high wind it is, then, Kairi grinned and clung of the mask, turning in her gaze to the ocean, open ocean. It's getting late, huh? Riku and Sora too saw that the sky had above the horizon was glowing brightly red and the sun would soon disappear below it. If we go to where the end of the sea, I bet we'll find the world where you came from, Kairi. Sora said it like he wanted a confirmation. Kairi turned slowly away, staring in the distance. We don't know that for sure. If we don't go and see, we'll never find out, Riku replied with his arms folded. Do you really think we can get that far on a raft? said Sora. Riku looked at him and back at the sea. Well, if it doesn't work, we'll think of something else. The sun sank lower towards the horizon, turning the sea and even the sand red. They had watched this very scene together countless times, but to Sora it looked a little bit different today. Something about that made him uneasy. After this, what's going to happen to us? I want to see other worlds, he thought. There was the sea, always so calm. So the storms came in once in a while. There were beautiful sandy beaches, there were birds on the hills, and even the mushrooms to eat, and Riku and Kairi, Titus and Selfie and Waka, Mom and Dad and the other people in town, all the wonderful friends he had fun with here on the Destiny Islands. But the landscape that Sora saw was always the same. If he could just see a different world, maybe something would change. So he wanted to try going somewhere else. Suppose you get to another world. What would you do there? Kairi asked Riku a little nervously. Do you just want to see, like Sora? Well, I haven't really thought about it. I just... I've always wondered why we're here on this island. If there are other worlds out there, why did we end up on this one? Riku paused for a moment. As if listening to the waves and then went on. And suppose there are other worlds. Then ours is just a little piece of something much greater. Then he turned to Sora and Kairi. So we could have just as easily ended up somewhere else, right? A little piece of something greater. This was a pretty complicated. Not quite following, Sora flopped over the raft. I don't know. Riku looked at him with a little scythe, 
and turned walking down towards the shore. That's why we need to go out there and find out. Just sitting here won't change a thing. Sora turned to the sea, his eyes following Riku. It's the same old stuff, and I want to go. You've been thinking a lot lately, haven't you? Kairi said softly. Thanks to you. If you hadn't come here, I probably never would have thought of any of this. Riku turned away from the sitting sun to look at her. Thanks, Kairi. Those words sounded more earnest to Sora than anything he had ever heard. He felt his heart skip a bit. Uh, you're welcome, Kairi said with a shy laugh, turning to the sea again. Well, guess I'd better get going. You two shouldn't stay too late for me either. Riku took off the pier with a brisk face, suddenly embarrassed by what he'd said. Staring after him, Kairi said in a tiny voice, You know, Riku's changed. What do you mean? said Sora. If there was anything different about Riku, he couldn't tell. It seemed like the usual Riku to him. Well, um, you don't think so? Nope, it's just you. Kairi looked a little sad at that, but then she blurbed. Hey, let's take the raft and go, just the two of us. She peered at Sora with a mischievous grin. Huh? What's going into you? You're the one that changed, Kairi. Maybe. She started ambling down the beach. Something small and bright fell out of her pocket. Kairi, you dropped something. Oh. She carefully picked it up and showed it to him. It was a pendant made of seashells, tied together in the shape of a star. What is it? I'm making talas of seashell charms. In the old days, sailors always wore them. They're supposed to ensure a safe voyage. A sailor's helmet, huh? Sora gazed at the charm in the palm of Kairi's hand. I'm making them so even if one of us gets lost, we'll make back here safe and sound, so the three of us will always be together. She placed it gently back in her pocket. The sun had always fallen halfway below the horizon. You know, I was a little afraid at first, but now I'm ready. Kairi looked at Sora, speaking like she'd made up her mind. No matter where I go, or what I see, I know I can always come back here. She, he ran to catch up with her. Yeah, of course. I still want to come back to the Destiny Island too, he thought. I want to see other worlds, but I'll come back. To the sea and the sky and everyone here. To this place with Kairi and Riku. I'm glad. Sora, don't ever change. Huh? Kairi smiled at his startled sound. I just can't wait. Once we set sail, it'll be great. Yeah, we'll make it for sure. The sun was nearly gone now. The waves went on and on with their calm, soft rush. A great trumpet fanfare rang out. The castle stood tall against the clear blue sky. The brune servants swept by on their important task of morning cleanings. Donald strode past them, chest puffed out, tail waddling to and fro. As the royal magician, his first order of business for the day was to greet the king. Ahem! Putting even more puff into his chest, he cleared his throat and knocked on the grand door ten times his size. A little Donald-sized door cut into the big door opener and opened, and he entered the great hall. Here, in the biggest room of in the castle, was the king's throne, and Donald walked up to it on the long red carpet. Good morning, your majesty. It's nice to see you this... Quack! The king should have been sitting there, but the throne was empty. Instead, the king's dog, Pluto, poked out from behind it. Pluto? Hearing his name, Pluto trotted up to Donald. He held a white envelope in his mouth. Quack! Pluto held his head out, waiting for Donald to take the envelope. Frowning, Donald did, and opened it to find a single sheet of notepaper. The moment his eyes took in the writing, <laughs> Donald ran back out of, the, out of the great hall, shouting all the way. Donald, sorry to rush off without saying goodbye, but a big trouble is brewing and there's no time to lose. I'd better leave right away. The stars have been blinking out one by one, and that means disaster can't be far behind. I hate to leave you all, but I've got to go look right into it. As the king, I'm asking you and Goofy to do something. There's someone out there with a key. The key to our survival. So I need you two to find him and stick with him. Cut it? We need to that key or we're doomed. Go to Traverse Town and find the man named Leon. He'll point you to the right direction. Yes. Would you apologize for the mini for me? Thanks, pal. That was the note he left behind. 
a very important letter from their beloved king and their dear friend. If this was all true, things were serious. The strange problem with the stars vanishing from the night sky and the disaster on the way. Did this mean the king had gotten involved in something really dangerous? Donald hurried down from the long hallway and out to the gardens. There, that was where he'd find Goofy, the captain of the Royal Knights. Captain Goofy, this is bad! Goofy was sound asleep. Donald tried to wake him up with no avail. Goofy! His shouts echoed in the peaceful country yard, but Goofy didn't stare. Now, total out of patience, Donald snapped his fingers and yelled, Panda! A little cracking bolt of lightning struck to the end of Goofy's black nose. Hi yup! Goofy blinked a few times and finally saw Donald. Hey there, Donald! Good morning! Nice weather, isn't Donald got him off his carefree hello. We've got a big problem! Problem? Now, don't tell anybody! Anybody? Tell him what? I'm telling you it's top secret! Donald said, flapping his arms. Goofy wasn't quite grasping the urgency of the situation. He got up slowly and stretched, looking at Donald. Win, Minnie? Not even the Queen! Daisy? Definitely not Daisy! Good morning, ladies! Goofy looked past Donald's flailing and nodded. Eh. Finally realizing what Goofy meant, Donald turned around to see Queen Minnie and his girlfriend Daisy. What's all the commotion, Donald? What? <laughs> Hearing the Queen's voice, Donald began flapping around again. Daisy poignantly cleared her throat. The castle spell shimmed the hour. Donald, Goofy, Daisy, and Queen Minnie were in the king's room, deep in a serious conversation. That's how it is, said Donald after explaining to the others. Oh dear, what could this mean? Daisy worried. It means we just have to trust the king, Minnie replied softly. Gosh, I sure hope he's all right, Goofy unhurled as usual. Donald kicked him in the shin and spoke with determination. Your Highness, don't worry. We'll find the king and this key. Thank you. Daisy, asked Donald, can you take care of the queen? Of course. You'll be careful now, both of you. With a scattered brain like Donald for a boyfriend, Daisy herself was quite steady. She'd be able to protect the castle and the queen in their absence. Oh, and Donald, take him with you. Queen gestured towards him, but Donald couldn't see anyone there. Eh, uh, who? Then Donald saw him, hopping up and down. Over here! Him? He was much smaller than Donald or Goofy. He wore a tiny suit and a silk hat, which he politely doffed and bowed to them. Cricket's the name. Jiminy Cricket, at your service. And Jiminy sprung up from under Donald's hat. What? I'll just stay here nice and quiet like this. No worries. With that, Jiminy jumped into Donald's pocket and made himself at home. Jimmy said his word disappeared too. Queen Minnie lowered her long lashes. Disappeared? said Goofy. Jiminy poked his head out from Donald's pocket again. His brows furrowed. That's right. It was my job that disappeared. Everyone just scattered. I was the only one who made it to this castle. Maybe you'll be able to find the others from your court, Jiminy, the Queen said. Jiminy leaped out from under the desk, doffing his hat again to Donald and Goofy. So that's how it is. Thanks for taking me along. All right, but Donald looked at the Queen. Outside of this castle, you mustn't let anyone know that you are come from another world, the Queen told them firmly. Oh, to keep the order, right? said Goofy. Right, to maintain the order of each world, Donald replied. It was a closely guarded secret that he and the others could leave Disney Castle and travel to other worlds. If the world got out, other people might try and go to the between worlds willy-nilly, and the order would break down. A heavy silence settled into the room. The Queen spoke brightly and dispelled it. Your coming ship should be ready soon. We hope your safe return. Please help the King. Donald saluted with his hand on his chest. Goofy returned to salute him off. You're coming to! He grabbed Goofy by the arm and dragged him out. The gummy ship factory was at the end of a long spiral staircase that wound down beneath the castle. Puffs of steam rose from the chugging, clanking machinery. In the middle of it all, a little orange rocket ship sat waiting for Donald and Goofy. 
This was the only kind of vessel capable of flying between the worlds. A gummy ship. A great big magic hands were readying the ship for departure, giving it final inspection. Channel tack to launch crew, Donald said into the big pipe, and his voice quacked through the, con the control room. Is she ready to go? The two crewmen smartly saluted in return. The one with the black nose was Chip, the designer, and the one with the red nose was Dale, the mechanic. Chip pulled a big lever on the control room, and the whole factory began to grow. What's going on? Goofy wondered, and just then a big magic hand picked him up. Ayo! Be quiet! Donald snapped, and another magic hand grabbed him by the tail. Jiminy nearly fell out of his pocket, hanging onto his silk hat and glass clinging on the Donald's hem of a dear life. Maybe go a little easier. And just as Goofy said that, they plopped down into the cockpit. Pluto, who must have been following them and for some time, jumped into... Pluto! Donald exclaimed. Pluto barked in reply. The cockpit smoothly closed up with the four of them inside, and the doors in front of the factory opened. The gummy ship slowly rose into launch position. Course, I'm kind of nervous, said Goofy. Hush, it's gonna be fine. Just as Donald scolded him, the gummy ship reached its mark. Queen Minnie and Daisy had just come to say them off. Please help the king and the worlds. A soft pleading reached the cockpit, but Donald gave a thumbs up and winked to the king, Queen and Daisy. The engine started with a boom, and the little ship shook. Blast off! Donald pointed to the track ahead, but the arrow there pointed down. Quack! A hole in the floor opened up and sucked in the gummy ship. It kept falling and finally popped up on the other side of the disc castle, upside down, then righted itself and sped into the stars. Lightning flashed, and in the near same moment, rain came battering down from the roof. Rain? Sora sat up and looked out the window. His house was on a bigger island, a little ways off from the small one where he and his friends always went to play. A little house in a little town, that was where he lived. Since he came home, he'd been spacing out, staring up at the ceiling, thinking about what happened today and what was going to happen soon. The rain started to come down harder. Showers after sunset were that rare here. The ocean here was usually calm, but once in a while there would be downpours or storms. Still. Lightnings flashed again, Sora could tell. It's coming from our island! He jumped out of bed. Sora took his kid-sized robot and hurried onto their island. There was a nice big reef surrounding it, so anything less than a hurricane wouldn't cause much damage. But at that moment, there was a raft to worry about. If the raft got swept away... Luckily, the waves weren't that very high yet. The raft wouldn't be okay if he just tied it good and tied to the cocoon tree. Rolling thunder enveloped the island. Sora looked up at the starless night sky to see a ball of darkly glowing energy floating in the air. What's that? When he climbed up on the dock, he saw there were two other small boats. Riku and Kairi are here too. He ran in, the, in front of the dock at the beach, but some kind of shadow rose up from the ground, walking his path. What's going on? He swung his wooden sword around, and it felt like he hit something, but the shadow didn't go away. In fact, more and more of them appeared. Ugh, they just keep coming. Sora gave up trying to beat them and ran along the beach, looking for Kairi and Riku. The wind swallowed up his voice as he shouted their names. At the waterfall, he paused and looked around. Then he saw it. In front of the bushes that hid the path to the secret spot, there was a big white door. What? Suddenly he remembered the strange man he'd seen in the afternoon. Soon to be completely eclipsed. No way, Sora thought. But he was definitely saying something like that. Anyway, I have to find Riku and Kairi. Holding on to the shadowy things at bay with his wooden sword, Sora looked around again. Riku! He could see Riku standing in the darkness, facing the sea, his silver hair whipping in the howling wind. Sora ran to him. Where's Kairi? I thought she was with you! Riku slowly turned. The door has opened. Riku? Something wasn't quite right about him. He was different. And what was this about the door? Did he mean the white door or... The door is open, Sora. Now we can go to the outside world, Riku said in a rush, strangely excited in his eyes. What are you talking about? We gotta find Kairi. Kairi's coming with us, Riku shouted at the top of his voice. Once we step through, 
We might not be able to come back, but this might be our only chance. We can't let fear stop us. I'm not afraid of the darkness. As he went on, eerie dark energy gathered above his head. Riku, let's go, Sora. Smiling, Riku stretched out his hand, but at his feet the darkness warmed and grew, twisting itself around his legs, and in the blink of an eye it had covered him completely. Riku! Sora tried to run toward him, but when he stepped into the darkness it began to dwindling up his body too. Smiling in the midst of the darkness, Riku called his name. Sora. But Sora couldn't reach him. Riku was engulfed in the darkness, and just as Sora was about to be swallowed up too, a light shone from inside it and drove it away. For a moment, Sora had shut his eyes against the brightness. When he opened them again, there was a giant shining key in his hand. A voice echoed in his head. Keyblade. As if on cue, the dark, shadowy things came up from the ground again. Sora swung the key, the keyblade at them, and this time they disappeared. Riku, with the keyblade still firmly in his hand, Sora looked around but couldn't see Riku anywhere. Riku! Where are you? Riku! Sora ran, swinging the keyblade as he searched. No matter how many of the shadowy things he defeated, more kept springing up. Finally, he was in front of the white door again. Huh? The door was opening, almost as if to invite him inside. This was the only place left on the island where Kairi and Riku could be. Sora ran through the door. Riku! Kairi! There was the cave, their secret spot, just the same as ever. The only difference was that the glowing door was at the end. And in the front of the door, Kairi stood silently staring at it. Kairi! Sora dashed towards her. She turned to look at him, slowly and sadly. Sora... The moment she reached out to him, the door began to open. Ink black darkness erupted out, blowing her toward him like the blast from an explosion. He tried to catch her in his arms, but her body just faded out. She passed through him and vanished. It was like she'd been sucked into Sora himself. He called her name, but with the huge rush, Sora and the door and the island were all hurled away in the wind. What's happening? Thrown out of the sand. Sora pounded on the ground with his fist. Inches away, the ground just dropped off like a cliff. He looked up and saw the dark spear covering the entire island. A huge black shadow was standing right in front of him. This isn't our destiny island anymore, he thought. Riku isn't here. kairi has gone too. So how am I still here? Sora was still on his hands and knees. The huge shadow swiped at him, knocking him aside. He groaned and the keyblade glowed in his hand. Power sleeps within you. Give it form and it will give you strength. I feel like someone's speaking to me. Power sleeping within me. I don't have any power. I can only just barely beat Riku. So how? No matter where I go or what I see, I know I can always come back here. But Kairi disappeared. Riku too. And now the entire island is about to disappear. How can we ever come back here? All three of us. Make it so three of you can always be together. Sora thought of Kairi's smile. Kairi and Riku and me, so we'll always be together, so we can come back here. The keyblade shone brightly, like it was reacting to Sora's emotions. There's no way I'm going to lose, so I can go see other worlds, so the three of us can run on the beach together. He stood up, and took a huge leap, and his attack became trails of light that wounded the shadow. Ah! I won't lose! Two, three blows from the keyblade he wielded, and woods made of light kept appearing on the giant shadow. You're not gonna beat me! Sora kept the, felt the keyblade piercing something, and the shadow let out an enormous roar. I did it. Bellowing in fury, the shadow was sucked into the dark spear up above. Kairi, Sora whispered. Before he could take another breath, the spear raged and howled, swelling up and dragged what remained of the island into it, along with Sora. With a terrible rumbling, it swallowed up the kokui trees, the rowboats, even the sea, Sora stretched to hold on to the wreckage of the wooden bridge, but the huge force pulled him off. In swirls of debris, he fell into the dark spear and disappeared. Because I here. That was the first chapter of the book. I will start working on the next chapter next week after I have seen the Birds of Prey movie and given it a review slash rant. If you wish to be informed when the next video will be out, 
YouTube has a notification system and a bell icon you can use with the subscribe button. May your heart be your guiding key.